As I sat back in anticipation of being called out, the first thought in my mind was, why did I say yes? <laughs> Have you ever had that feeling when you volunteer for something before and you immediately feel that feeling of regret and like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that? That was me when I was encouraged to do my first speech many years ago. Raise your hand if you can recall your first speech in Toastmasters. Yeah. Do you remember the feeling you had? Remember the thoughts that went through your mind? For me, I was absolutely terrified. It was the summer of 2003, and I was asked, with a little push, to give my four to six minute icebreaker speech. And I was absolutely terrified. You see, I'm a natural introvert and an IT professional. My ideal communication with you, Michael, would be at my desk, sending you an email, an instant message chat, or maybe a text message. But getting an up in front of a group was the last thing that I wanted to do. So as I walked up that day, I had thoughts going through my head. What if I forget my lines? What if they don't like me? What if I just completely embarrass myself? When I walked up and I shook hands with the introducer, my hands were dripping with sweat because of how nervous I was. When I looked out at the crowd, I literally thought that the people, like where Carmen's sitting, could see the butterflies fluttering in my stomach. And as I began to talk, my mouth was completely dry, as if I had been chewing cotton balls all morning long. It was painful. But I, I pulled out my notes, I unfolded my notes, and I began to read my four to six minute speech like this. Head down to the paper for four to six minutes. After I finished, I was completely embarrassed and ashamed. And when I went back to my seat, I thought the nervousness would go away, but it actually increased because I knew that within 15 to 20 minutes, I would be receiving an oral evaluation. And I immediately had thoughts of how things were when I was in college and my public speaking professor would give me feedback like, Michael, you did that wrong. Don't do this. It's just embarrassing things. Did anyone in here take public speaking in college? Okay. Yeah. You remember the reviews, the the evaluations in college? Not as comforting as the ones we're getting here in Toastmasters. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, I was nervous when my evaluator came back up. However, when my evaluator walked up, he actually surprised me. Michael, he looked at me and said, he said, Michael, congratulations on having the confidence to come up here and give your first speech. He also went on to talk about several key attributes that I had that would make me a competent communicator in the future. And then, instead of giving me a long list of items to work on, he said, Michael, I have two items for you to, to work on for your next speech. So I went from nervousness and feeling ashamed to hope and confidence, because I finally realized that, hey, the Toastmasters education program will work for me, because of what he did. And that absolutely changed everything. And like I said, that was back in 2003. I knew that Toastmasters would work for me. I knew it was gonna take some work. It wasn't gonna be easy. But I knew that I could do it. Fast forward, thanks to what I've been learning in Toastmasters, at work, I've been able to deliver 23 all-day workshops, training workshops for my company. In addition to that, I've given over 100 45 minutes and above training workshops slash presentations. And I've given hundreds of short, small speeches like this. Thanks for what I'm learning in Toastmasters. So when Pathways rolled out a couple years ago, I immediately signed up for two paths. I signed up for Presentation Mastery and Leadership Development because I had a plan in place for what I wanted to accomplish. Thanks to what I've been learning from those two paths, they gave me the skills and the courage to reach out to the John Maxwell team to become a speaker and a trainer for part of his program. 